So my name is Enos Hirschberger. We're live today on this podcast. The purpose for this podcast is to just share our stories and hopefully inspire some of you to do the same. So we hope that you like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to continue to share our stories and uh, we hope that it continues to inspire people to do that as well. So today I have with me on the podcast my good friend and nephew with the big cowboy hat if you're watching the video, Paul. Mm. Uh, Paul, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you're related to me. Paul, my name's Paul, Troyer, my last name. Um, I'm 18, being new to life, trying to learn things. So, to my very right, I have my good friend, Blake Hirschberger, my nephew as well. Blake, uh, tell me a little bit. Tell tell the people watching a little bit about yourself and what you're what you're doing right now. Um, I'm in school, and I'm 16, and my full name is Blake Swenson. And uh, what I do other than school is all I do is train at baseball. You're training for baseball, so we can hop right into uh, the correction that you made about your name. If you'd like to share a little bit about, uh, I introduce you as Blake Hirschberger, but I guess your last name is Swenson. So if you want to share a little bit about that and just explain. Well, I don't really know for sure why, but my parents just told me that they just put my mom's name down on my birth certificate instead of my dad's. So you go by Blake Swenson instead of Hirschberger. Gotcha. Well, let's let's get right into it. And uh, Paul, you can uh, maybe you can share a little bit about um, your relation to me and what you're doing right now for work. Well. Um, you're my uncle. I'm his nephew. And how are you related to me? Like what? Like are you? Are you? Who's your mom? <laughs> my mom is your sister. <laughs> okay. But also, uh, for work, I do masonry. That's construction. That's where you hang stone on a house. A lot of people don't know that. When yeah. you say masonry, they have no idea what that is. So I have to explain. Yeah. So yeah. you have to explain a lot what you Not do. Not always. Oh, there are some people that do know what masonry is. So, so you so you're so you work on a crew that's hanging stone on a house. So you're helping making all those houses beautiful that are mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. With stone on them. Yeah. So you guys do mostly residential work. Yeah. Or yeah. okay. Rarely. Mm -hmm. We've only I've only ever done one commercial. Oh, like the okay. Most job. Yeah. How long have you been doing the stone work? Uh, around four years now. Four years? Yeah. Wow. I didn't yep. realize you were doing that for that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I started at 14. At 14? Yeah. At but 10, you were still in school, right? Yeah. I did okay. part-time then. Part-time. Yeah. Yeah, so for those of you that have just tuned in, um... And this is the second episode that we're recording. Last week we had Lavina Hirschberger on, my niece, that I just left the Amish. And a lot of people are tuning in because they want to hear the Amish story and the, the relations to us leaving the Amish. And so, but for you guys, you guys were never Amish, right? I was for six months. I was born Amish. I remember that because yeah. you used to walk around with... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember you being Amish. <laughs> Cause I I don't know. I guess uh, I'm trying to figure out. I was I was pretty little when you were born, but I do remember you being Amish. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so your parents left when you were really little. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't remember being Amish. But for Blake, he wasn't even born Amish, mm -hmm. right? No. So you don't. Yeah, I mean, the only thing, the only experience that you would have with the Amish is what? My family. Your family? Yeah. Yeah. 
because um, Grandma and Grandpa, they were Amish, and no, you still have an uncle that's Amish, my brother, yeah. that's still Amish, and an, and an aunt that's still Amish. But a lot of people are tuning in because of that. They want to hear more of the Amish story. But that's part of, I mean, I guess it could be, but possibly part of the reason why you went straight to work. Because the Amish, they don't, they don't graduate. Or they graduate from 8th grade. They only go to 8th grade, and then they start working full-time at 14. I had my first job when I was 10, and... Uh, I skipped school a lot because I had a job. Mm -hmm. and this is why my English is challenged. <laughs> so uh, it's funny because uh, I don't know if I should share this or not, but my eight-year-old he he tends to correct me sometimes in my English. <laughs> oh, is he corrects you? So you know, so you know what's right. It's, he does it. He does it in a loving way, so it's it's fun. But yeah. Trace is super smart. He he uh, he can read really well. But, and I know you guys can as well, because mm -hmm. your schooling was, I would imagine, a lot better than ours was <laughs> yes. growing up. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to share a little bit about your schooling experience and then why you chose to go work at fourteen. Oh uh, well, uh, school was. Not that bad. It was, I don't know, public school. So you can expect what you think. Well, my uncle that I work for, uh, superb masonry, uh, he needed help because he was the only one that uh, was working. He was by himself. Oh, okay. So he needed some help during the summer. So I would go and help him during the summer and then go back to school in August. Yeah, somewhere in there and then go through school. And then at 15, I was still working part-time, so I would work through the summer then. And then at like, was it like 15 and a half, I started doing full-time. Because that's right, right around where COVID hit. Oh, okay. Somewhere in there. So in 2020. 15, 16. Yeah. yeah. So in 2020, you just, you just, I mean, you weren't going to school. Anyway, I was right? doing homeschooling yeah. at the time, yeah. So you just decided the heck with school and yeah. just and go work for it. <laughs> You're pretty smart. I mean, probably, you know, and I'll probably get a lot of hate for this, but the schooling system, the way it's set up, is, I mean, it, it's great. I feel like if you're going to be a doctor or an attorney, you should definitely go get a college education. But for your kid, for for you, it was better for you to just go straight to work. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause uh, I mean, you didn't necessarily know exactly what you wanted to study yet, anyway, right? No, I didn't. So yeah. now you have a little better idea, or do you feel like you're still not sure? I'm still not sure. I'm just going. With the years I got. <laughs> Getting some experience. Yeah. Well, you're wearing a cowboy hat. I, I feel like maybe that's... Maybe you want to be a Texas Ranger? <laughs> well, I, I've always wanted to be... Or since I was four, I've always wanted to be a... Uh, always wanted to be a cop. Or a oh, sheriff. A so, sheriff? Yeah. Okay. So I might do that. I might not. I'm not sure. So where are you from right now? Like, where do you live right now? Ohio. Ohio. Navarre, Ohio. Navarre, Ohio. Yep. So anybody in Navarre, Ohio, you run into Paul Troyer, make sure you say hi. Yep. But you are in Navarre, Ohio, but Tex I mean, if you want to be a Texas Ranger, you got to move to Texas. So. Yeah. I could. <laughs> so what about you, Blake? You're, uh, you're in school right now, and you have no intention of getting out, right? Nope. <laughs> well, why is that? Well... I don't know, I just <clears throat> want to keep doing baseball, and in order for me to keep doing baseball, I have to stay in school and yeah. get good grades. Get good grades? So I can play high school baseball. Gotcha. So your goal is to, to continue <coughs> to stay in school and play high school baseball? Gotcha. So you, you're trying to go pro or what? Yeah, I want to. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. I didn't know that about you. You wanted to go pro. He's going to go pro, too. Because he's, he's got an uncle that's going to hold him accountable, for sure. And he's got a dad that's going to hold him accountable. So, Blake, Blake both of these young men are hard workers, and uh, they're definitely going to do a lot of great things, continue to do a lot of great things in life. And we're super, super thankful for that. I do want to ask you, because you've brought it up to me, that you want to share your experience with about your faith, so we're we're jumping right. I do now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, so uh, share whatever you feel like you want to share about that and your experience in that. Maybe, um, I mean, there's stuff that I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. So well, I feel like the part that where I grew most of my faith in the Lord was. When uh, the church we go to in Ohio, in Apple Creek, Ohio, it's called Freedom Fellowship. Okay. And uh, they have this Bible school, basically. And okay. It's called Fish Freedom International School of Harvest. And I, in the first year I did that, like first couple months, I was I wasn't really interacting with it. And then they uh, in around August. Somewhere there, August, uh, they have a thing called Retreat. Okay. And uh, that's where you go, and there's a couple speakers that go and just hang out and have fun. And Well, that's uh, that weekend, I had breakthrough very much. I broke out of my shell, and I've been praising the Lord since. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's where I grew my faith mostly was because I knew that no matter what was going on in my life, God still has my back. Wow. That is yeah. a huge revelation, huh? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Good for you. Mm -hmm. That is great. I think, and that's, I think that's inspiring for a lot of people because there's a lot of kids, young kids, that they don't feel like anybody has their back, mm. Mm. you know. And I know I was there for a long time. You're what, 18? Yeah. You're yeah. 18, so, I mean, I was, I was 19 before I realized that anybody had my back. Mm. So, and uh, that's, you know, it's a hard childhood, a hard, it's a rough life growing up that way, if you yeah. feel that way. So there's a lot of kids out there. So what what would your advice be to those kids that don't feel like anybody's got their back? What would you say to the twelve year old you? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know if my twelve year old would even listen. <laughs> For real? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they would. Maybe they would. But let's say but, the twelve year old you had somebody that you did want to listen to. And you, for for just a second, you actually listen to somebody, you know, and you you were able to speak into a twelve year old's life that was actually open minded to listen. I would say, if you want to have the greatest relationship in your life, go seek God. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty profound. You think you could back that up, Blake? What? <laughs> what he just said. If you want to have the greatest relationship in your life, go seek God. I don't know how to back it up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to back that up? No. You just, uh, I don't, I would say, uh, I, th I think that's pretty deep. I think that's, that's awesome. I think it's great advice, too. Because you will, regardless of your faith mm -hmm. and the moment, if you seek God through His Word, you'll find a lot of answers. To yeah, you will. Yeah. So, uh, what else are you working on right now, outside of baseball? Keeping my grades up in school. <laughs> are you working mentally on that ice bath that we were about to do today? No. <laughs> so you want to you want to tell them a little bit about the experience you had yesterday, Paul? Oh, uh, well, a lot of people were 
challenged in doing uh, the ice bath, but because, well, you have to face your fears and getting in the ice bath and staying in there for a minute to three minutes, somewhere in there, and uh, you just have to take control of yourself and overcome that. And while well, it wasn't really difficult for me, not trying to brag or anything, but uh, because I've done it like two, maybe three times already, okay. and it was it wasn't that hard. It was just yeah, it wasn't really that hard. It was painful. Yeah, it was. Painful. My fingers were <laughs> about to fall off. Felt like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's. But Blake opted out of the ice bath, so that's why we're still working on him. <laughs> we're still working on him today. We're gonna we're gonna get him to go in there today. Right after this. Yep. <laughs> no, you're shaking your head. <laughs> no. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. You're still thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So I went in the ice bath yesterday. And I felt like my neck was about to get cut off. <laughs> you were shivering like crazy. I was shivering. Dude, that was brutal. <coughs> Got out of there and my whole body was shaking. I couldn't hardly talk. I tried to record somebody else that was going in the ice bath. And my phone was going like this. <laughs> like, that was the worst. And I don't know. I mean, I grew up in Minnesota. So, like... I was used to the cold at one point in time, mm -hmm. but now, like, living in Texas, man, the cold is just not for me anymore. Yeah. Plus, I, I never liked the cold to begin with, because I think when I grew up, you know, growing up, I, we didn't have the furnace in the house, you know, the only heat we had was the wood stove. Mm -hmm. I used to wake up in the morning upstairs with, like, snow on the on the windowsill on the inside of the room and we like blow or we'd breathe and you could see our breath go up in the room. Don't be freezing. <laughs> and you're like you're under the covers like, oh I need to get up but I'm not gonna get up because it's so flipping cold I can't I don't wanna get up. And then the and then you know dad's yelling upstairs said you need to get down there and go do chores. And so the last second you get up, run downstairs, and stand in front of the stove. And that's how you heat up. And that's probably, I'm traumatized. I might need some counseling. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why I do not like the cold. Yeah. I mean, I very much despise the cold. Part of it, I'm sure. But then there's also the part where we, you know, had horse and buggy for transportation. And you guys experienced some of that, because Grandpa used to give you a ride in the horse and buggy. Yeah. But he gave you a ride in the horse and buggy when the weather was nice. Um, not always. <laughs> not always? No, because, um, like almost, or there was a lot of times where I went with, it was just me and Grandpa, where we went to the horse auctions. Oh, okay. Yeah. When was that? Oh, um, uh, when they lived at the old place uh, with a uh, uh, barn in the back. Uh huh. Yeah. And you From guys didn't come visit to, or what? Huh? Yeah. And then for like two or three days, so me and Grandpa would take the buggy. It would be like <coughs> an hour drive or something like that. <coughs> Which is about how many miles? I don't know. Did you guys go to Lanesboro, I think, Minnesota? Yeah. So it was like seven miles. Yeah. But it's about an hour drive. One way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. <coughs> I took that trip many times. But he would take you to the auction? Mm hmm Oh. And we would sit there and watch the auction. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was actually That's kind of awesome. Fun. That's some great memories. Oh, huh? yeah. Yep. That's great. I, I had no idea he did that. Really? Yeah. See, when you leave, like, like your relationship is probably a lot better with Grandpa than my relationship with my dad, which mm -hmm. is the same person. But, yeah. but the, you know, once I leave, he's not really supposed to associate with 
his mm. son. So even though I didn't hang out with him sometimes, like he would do stuff with you guys that yeah. he would never do with me. Because mm. you're his grandchild and he's a little softer on you. <laughs> Of course, as he got older, um, he did more stuff with us. But what about you, Blake? Did you you got rides in the buggy all the time as well? Yeah. You live right there in Minnesota, close by Grandma and Grandpa's house. So, did you ever go to the auction with him? Yeah, we, me and Paul went together one time. Oh, okay, cool. Was that the only time that you? I might have went some other times, but I didn't go that much. Okay. What was like the the memory with the horse and buggy that you that you remember with Grandpa? In the horse and buggy. Yeah, like going somewhere or doing something or. Oh, uh, there's one time when we went somewhere to get get sand for a sandbox that he was making. Oh, okay. I for the grandkids. That. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Gotcha. Where did you guys go to get the sand? It was like a natural sand spot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know where that natural sand yeah. spot is, because <laughs> we used to go there as kids and play in the sand. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So it was like this place on the side of the road, mm -hmm. and uh, you just pull up, and and you have five-gallon buckets most of the time, fill them up, and put them in the buggy, and then drive three miles back, or whatever it was, and a couple miles, maybe, and uh, dump the sand in the sandbox. We had a big tractor tire for our sandbox. <laughs> I didn't remember that. And on that same, where the sandbox was in that same area, we had a big oak tree. And we had a big, tall swing that was, that would swing from that oak, oak tree. And it was, it was pretty tall, at least that's what I remember as a kid. But we'd go push each other on that oak tree, or on the swing, until we get so scared that sometimes we'd fall off and really get hurt. <laughs> I think my, I think your dad fell off one time and broke his teeth or something like that. You have to ask him about that sometime. But he was just, he was just little. I remember falling off that swing and crawling on the trees and all the fun stuff. I think the best memory I had uh, when we were riding the buggy was when we went to Lanceboro. I think he bought a uh, of gauge, I think. Yeah, for hunting. And he got his license in Lanceboro. His hunting license. And on the way back, you know the big hill? That, uh, like, so you go down the big hill and then, like, I don't know, 100 yards or 200 yards to the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right before old. we got uh, to the house, right, yep. The forest yep. right there. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, and we were pulling up, and he saw a deer, and he grabbed the uh, <laughs> shotgun, and he shot he shot at the deer in the buggy. No way. What in the world? Yeah. So, he, so he, bu he bought a guy in town. Yeah, and had like, and, and and his license. hunting license. And on the way back, the way back. <laughs> he shot. He shot that deer. I don't, I don't think he hit it, but yeah. That that's <clears throat> that a hundred percent describes my dad, for sure. Because I remember, like the greatest memories I have of him, of of my dad, uh, hunting, was him pulling up in the buggy and shooting right out of the buggy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just, Probably highly illegal, but <laughs> very. and not suggested on here. Nobody should be doing that. <laughs> but he did that many, many times, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember. And he was, I, my memories of my dad was like he was not a great shot. Like he would always hit the deer in the legs, or like he, he was just not a. You know, my brother, your dad is a really good shot. Like, he is, I mean, he practices all the time. He's he's yeah. deadly with a rifle. And you're you're very good at shooting as well. Yeah. So, that may be your second career or your hobby. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you guys shoot up to, like, what, 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards? Yeah, he's one, but I haven't went yet. How long have you shot? What's the longest shot you've taken? Uh, 
I think it was 400 yards. 400 yards? Yeah, see, my dad would take a 100-yard shot, and he'd miss the deer or blow his leg off or something. <laughs> it's like, you might want to get a little better at shooting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was fun. It was a lot of, you know, a lot of fun memories. We'd go out and push all the deer out of the woods, mm. and then a couple people would stage at the other end mm -hmm. and, and shoot. And I, for those of you watching that are not hunters, like that, I mean, that's one of the primary ways that the Amish support their families is hunting, you know. They rely on deer hunting and, and or at least the way we grew up, like the sorts of true Amish. It's not necessarily true for all Amish, but we definitely made hunting a priority. And then we... You know, we butcher cows and pigs to go along with that deer meat. But my dad loved to hunt. I mean, we were always hunting growing up. Mm -hmm. I only remember him one time skipping a hunting season. And it's just because he was too busy at work. Mm -hmm. You said that was one of the greatest memories you had of Grandpa. Probably. Probably. <laughs> That's a pretty awesome experience yeah. as a kid. Grandpa seems like a bad dude <laughs> for a minute. Yeah. Because I didn't know what he was doing at all. And then he grabbed the shotgun. I'm like, what is he doing? And all of a sudden he shoots in the woods. And he's like, well, didn't you see it? There was a deer there. Like, no. I didn't see anything. Uh, how old were you? I don't even know. Probably seven or eight. Oh, my goodness. Probably. <laughs> Maybe younger. I'm not sure. Welcome to welcome to the Amish life of hunting. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the questions that we always got as as kids growing up. Like, can you get a speeding ticket in a buggy, or can you get an you know can you get a DUI if you're drinking in a buggy? <laughs> I guess I never did find out if you can get a DUI, mm -hmm. but I definitely um, had plenty of opportunities to find out. But I don't think you can. <coughs> not a motorized vehicle. Mm. No, they might take you to jail just to scare you, but yeah, I don't think yeah. you can actually get a DUI. I think the other uh, memory that was good was when your dad brought all the go karts oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and the four wheeler and uh, the whole place. Oh, he brought a bunch of go karts mm. and four wheelers out to the farm. Yeah. Yeah. What What did you guys do? Just Right around river on that gravel gravel road oh, across yeah. the street. I almost went in the ditch with a go kart because uh, I was trying to race my dad. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun on the farm. Mm. Growing up, I mean, growing up on the farm, and then you know, grandma and grandpa had the farm for quite a while, mm -hmm. and then they ended up selling and moving to town, and well, they bought four acres. On yeah. in town, but right over the edge of town. That place was a lot of fun too. Yeah. The golf cart or the golf course right there. Yeah. So what what would you say that your greatest memory of grandma or grandpa was, or uh, both? Grandpa. Yeah, grandpa. Yeah. I, mean, I said the sand thing. Oh yeah, the sand thing. Yep. Yeah. That was that's a great memory, because I think most of us, most of us kids. At one time or another, we went to that sand pit to get to get sand to play in. What about Grandma? I don't even know. There's a lot of memories with her. Yeah, and at the time of this recording, uh, my parents both passed away within the last within the last year and a half, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Grandma passed away. My mom, like six months ago, probably. Yeah. And then um, my dad passed away about a year and a half ago. So this is the first first uh, Christmas, first New Year's without, without yeah. Grandma. Yeah, feels weird. It does. Mm -hmm. It does feel, it feels really strange not having her around, but uh, there's a lot of people that are dealing with that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that have their first holidays and things without their parents or grandparents and but yeah, it doesn't take away the fact that it's 
strange that they're not around, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what else do you want to share? What's with the cowboy hat? Well, I just got it here. Or I've been here, I've been to Texas four times now. Yeah. Um, and when I came with my dad to go hog hunt hunting, and I got this hat because I didn't have one and because I liked it. It looked yeah. good on me, so I got it. Yeah, please comment if you like Paul's hat and you think it looks good on him. I think it looks great. I think he should keep it and uh, move here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like uh, the uncle that's constantly trying to get them to move to mm -hmm. Texas. We moved here from Ohio about, was it 2018? I guess five years ago? What would that be? Five years ago? Yeah. Quick math. Five yeah, years five. ago. Blake is the math with wizard. No, we moved here about five years ago, a little over five years ago, and um, it's been a great experience. Definitely got me out of my shell. Mm -hmm. Moved here from Ohio. It's where my wife is from. Yeah, it's where Paul lives. It's where my three of my sisters live there. I have a brother that lives there. He lived there for a year. Yeah, or two. Blake. Yeah. Blake and. His dad lived, his mom and dad lived there for a year, and then they skipped back to Minnesota. Now we're trying to get them to move to Texas. And a lot of people might ask, like, or wonder, why do the Amish move around so much? Do you know why? Well, because they have so many kids, they can't, they have to get a bigger house. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, they move from state to state, Paul. Like, yeah, why? They, why do they do that? I don't know. Immigration. <laughs> Immigration. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's an interesting question. You know why, Blake? No. You don't. I suppose it's well. One of the reasons they do it is because they want like a lot of them, a lot of them go into a community, and if they don't like really fit in the, to that community, or they think the community is like getting out of hand with their youth and they're not like following the rules and they're partying a lot mm -hmm. and yes the Amish party and uh, um, they're not supposed to but they do mm. a lot <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and so when that happens uh, the, the families recognize that hey this is not a great environment for my kids so I'm gonna move out of state to a different state and a lot of them begin to start the like start a new community mm. thinking that if they leave the old community and go start a new one that everything's going to be so much better mm. but it's a perfect picture that you can't ever get away from yourself so like if you leave the old community go to a new community and your kids are the one creating the chaos and <laughs> and the parties and stuff. Guess what the new community is going to be like? <laughs> going to be a bunch of parties and it's still going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. may not be that way for a while. Lavina, niece that was on the podcast last week, she's a perfect example of that. My brother moved out of the community in Minnesota to create a better life and a better environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, things are not, you know... Some things may be a little bit better, but they still party in that mm -hmm. community. They just have to do a better job of hiding it than most communities. Yeah. <laughs> so, with you, like, what is it like? I've always wondered, like, what is it like for you to be, the not have grown up Amish, but yet being, like, a part of the Amish community? Well, I feel like I'm glad that I didn't, because... <laughs> Well, I think I would. I would think or, I think I would have a different mindset about things. But I'm glad that I don't, because I could, like, well, I feel like the Lord would have still brought me out, even though if I would have stayed Amish, uh -huh. I feel like He would have still brought me out. Gotcha. My, yeah. And so you wouldn't have been a good little Amish boy and stayed Amish. <laughs> uh, well, because my dad didn't, so I probably wouldn't have either. Yeah, 
But I'm just glad that I don't know. I don't feel like it's bad to be Amish, but I feel like it would be great if the Amish knew what the real truth was, mm. like about God and their religion. Wait, because most people believe that the Amish are religious and they are they have a relationship with God, or most of them have a relationship with God. Or aren't all aren't all Amish Christians? <laughs> I wouldn't say so, but that's not me for, that's not me to say, or. That's not, that's, that's not, not, oh, I'm not. But in your, but your, in your opinion and what you know about the Amish. <laughs> yeah, I would say they're <laughs> not because they feel, or I feel like they think ob objectively if they have things that are like objects that, that if you don't have this or you have that, then you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's more it's more ge geared towards works, would you say? Yeah. Is that what you see? I would say. Okay. Instead of. So you're glad that you didn't grow up in that environment for that reason, like because most people believe that the Amish are Christians. They're all Christians, like that from the outside looking in, because they're so mm -hmm. conservative. Mm -hmm. But for you, you're saying. You're glad you didn't grow up that way because well, of the way they think. They think, but also how they, because like most of them just need batteries. Like I'd, I'd rather use an engine. <laughs> so convenience yeah, is another just thing. Convenient. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty honest, Paul. Mm. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So you didn't, you wouldn't appreciate it. Like driving a horse and buggy for transportation. No, and I like, think I'd rather drive my <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah, you know, what about you, Blake? From the outside looking in, like what, what do you see? Not having. I mean, you didn't even. You weren't even born Amish, <laughs> but you were. <coughs> but you were still like. I mean, you see that you see the struggles that your dad maybe has faced with. Because he was not born out of the Amish. Like, he was born Amish. He was Amish until he was 17, I think. Mm -hmm. He left the Amish. And you still see some of the struggles he faces, right? Well, I don't really know. I mean, like, you recognize that... Would you recognize that he has limitations because of... The Amish schooling system, or the Amish beliefs, yeah, or the Amish beliefs. Yeah. And like how, <clears throat> Grandpa, like, yeah, just like how Grandpa raised him. Mhm. Mm so what do you see? Like, how do you see the Amish, and what um, do you know about them? I would say that uh, they do life the hard way. <laughs> life our way. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. They could have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's fun. Yeah. Some of that is some of that is fun, but some of it is yeah, it's definitely just a lot of hard work. When people say like, Oh, that looks so like I wanna live that way I'm like, you do it until you live that way and then mm. you don't. You know, it's just human nature. It really is just human nature. It's not like, you know, I leave the Amish. Now I have to, like, create things to be hard at times. Mm -hmm. You know, like working out. Mm -hmm. When I was Amish, I never worked out. Yeah. I was in better shape than I am. Well, probably about the same shape I am now. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have to work out. Mm -hmm. Everything I did was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Physically. But... I, th I I would rather work out an hour a day than to work physically as hard as the Amish do 12 hours a day. <laughs> I mean, that's just me. But And then also, I think, uh, growing up Amish, you know, as a kid, like, you don't know any different. You know, as a kid, I didn't, I mean, I knew that, man, it would be nice to have a four-wheeler. It would be nice to have a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. Like, those things. It would be nice to play football. That's, like, if I could go back in time, I would want to play football as a kid. And, you know, that would be really nice. So it's, it's, 
I mean, I'm sure for your dad, <clears throat> he really liked uh, baseball and playing yeah. softball, so I'm sure for your dad. And I'm, like, super proud of you for playing baseball because, you know, part of me lives through you because you're playing the sport and I never got to, so I think that's awesome. And I'm looking forward to my sons playing whatever sport they want to play. Or maybe they don't want to. Right now they're super interested in it. Mm -hmm. As a dad, that's super. I, I mean, I love seeing it because I'm like, as a kid, I just dreamed about doing that and I didn't get to mm -hmm. because we were Amish. And the Amish don't play organized sports. <laughs> or most of them don't. At least not the way we grew up. Um, there are some more modern Amish that play softball. In fact, I think my dad grew up with an Amish that was, he would have been, he, I, I believe the Cleveland Indians wanted to draft him, but he went back to the Amish, so he turned down the, the opportunity, which mm -hmm. is absolutely in, insane. Like, mm -hmm. anybody would give, I mean, so many people would give their all to have that opportunity. This guy just went back to the Amish and never played baseball. Like, he'd play in the local, mm. in the local tournaments, and he was, like, the best guy. But he never, he never went pro, because he was, he went to the he, Do you think he knew how much money he got out of it? I think he did. Mm. Yeah, I think he did, because, see, the Amish, when they're, like, their commitment level, their word to their community is more important than any amount of money. Most mm. of them. Mm. Like, if you... And I think that's important for for all of us to learn. Like, if you say you're Christian, your belief in Christianity should be more important than money. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and you should die for that. Yeah. If you say that that's who you are. Because that's just like a hardcore belief in whatever you believe in. Not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah. You know, like, the Amish having that belief, but at least, like, it can't be bought off, or, you know, they die for their belief, mm. most of them would. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what happens. You see a lot of, I mean, I, I work alongside a, quite a few Amish, like, they have so much potential, mm. and what, my best friend growing up, so much potential. The guy could make a lot of money mm. if he left the Amish, but he chose to stay in the community and he makes enough to support his family and that's it, you know. And it's kind of sad to see because it's almost like the gift that he had been given is slowly dying because he, he's choosing not to use it. Mm. So, and you'll, you see that in the community a lot. But you'll never see an Amish person on an organized sports team. <laughs> Hopefully one day. <laughs> well, I say never. I mean, you may have somebody that dresses up like they're Amish to go play sports. But there you go, Blake. <laughs> you <know. laughs> Put the hat on and the beard. And, <laughs> hey, he's already starting on the beard. <laughs> What's up with the Amish beard, do you know? Mine? Well, no, like, no, not, not years. I mean, I always want to joke around and say I couldn't be Amish because I can't grow a beard. <laughs> but that's not true. Every Amish can grow a beard whether it's one hair or ten. <laughs> I mean, they just, they just uh, get whatever they get. Mm -hmm. But they will definitely not shave it off. But what's up with the beard? Do you know what, why the Amish have a beard? I do. I want to see what Blake thinks. No. You don't know why they have a beard? You're that close to the Amish and you don't know why they have a beard? <laughs> Your dad has a beard, you yeah. should ask him. All I know is that you can't shave it. You're not allowed to shave it. But it's very specific. You can't shave this part of the beard. Everything else, and if you're watching the video, you can see there's a line. If you look at the Amish, uh, the consistency of the Amish beard you begin to pick up that there's a specific line that they follow on the beard shaving. And some may be a little bit higher than others, but you can't have a mustache and you can't keep this hair right by your lips. So, and the beard goes all the way up to your sideburns. 
and you can't shave the underside of your beard either. It's very specific. I think a lot of people don't recognize that. Now, some people want to grow an Amish beard and they grow a mustache. I'm like, yeah, you can't be Amish. <laughs> you have a mustache. Mm -hmm. But do you know why they have a beard? Yeah, because it shows uh, who's married and who's not. I would say that that is part of the reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking these questions because I don't know myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do know that the married thing is like, uh, when they start growing a beard is when you join the church, when you get ready to join the church. So anybody that has a beard is either joining the church or has already joined the church. So that's when that goes into play. You don't, like, you shave until that point. Mm -hmm. I shaved. I mean, I was 19. I never joined the church, so I shaved. Mm -hmm. my whole my whole time of being Amish and that's how you I'm guessing and this is just me guessing because I never asked that question as a kid mm -hmm. why that well I don't think I did I asked a lot of questions that they didn't answer mm -hmm. they couldn't answer but because I was very curious and this is why I'm not Amish and this is why we're talking on this podcast because <laughs> I still want to know some of these things but I think like I know that for a fact that the beard has something to do with joining the Amish church. Mm. If you see an Amish man with a beard, he's more than likely a part of the church. Mm. He's a member of the church. Yeah. So, there you go. That's the beard talk. You guys about ready to wrap it up? You got anything else you want to share? Oh, really? No. No? Not really. Okay, well, thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, of course. We're looking forward to having you back on. And I know there's a lot of people watching that have a lot of questions. And they can leave those in the comments below. And we'll do the best we can to answer them. And if they have specific questions for Paul and about his hat or Blake and about why he's wearing his hoodie, <laughs> we, can, uh, we can forward those to them. Uh, maybe they can answer them. And we'll try to have them back on soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching today. We appreciate uh, you guys liking and subscribing and sharing this podcast. And we look forward to the next episode.